This is Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research, talking about world-class benchmarking for PT Jopfra Comfeed Indonesia. Let's take a look at the company and get a little background. First of all, PT Jopfra Comfeed Indonesia is the second largest poultry feed producer in Indonesia with around a 22% market share. The company is involved in all stages of chicken processing, ranging from farming to product distribution. It also has operations in beef and fish, including production of related food products for consumers and export. The ticker code is JPFA. Market cap is about 1.5 billion US dollars and average daily turnover is a million, which is a little bit low for this size of a company. Beta is 1.5 and they're in the consumer staples sector. Let's take a look at what's going on at the company. First of all, they have five divisions, the biggest of which is chicken feed. It contributes 48% of total company revenue. So the second major division is broilers or processed chickens, which make up just over a quarter of sales. So they produce the chicken and the feed to feed it. Day old chicks are 10% and the remaining 14% comprises aquaculture, cattle and beef and related trading. Within the integrated poultry business, which combined accounts for 86% of the company's total sales, chicken feed contributes 96% of overall operating profits. So it's a very profitable feed business. The company needs to continue growing its day-old chicks business, however, as farmers will usually buy chick feed, chicken feed from their day-old chick suppliers. Now, day-old chicken chicks suppliers are licensed and controlled by the Indonesian government. A year ago, day-old chicks was in chronic oversupply, but the government promoted a culling, which is continuing and has resulted in considerably improved market condition, meaning prices have gone up. The fish and cattle divisions are devoted to farming and processing related products for consumer use. Uh, let's take a look at the revenue breakdown. Animal feed, 48%. Broilers, 28%. Day old chicks, 10%, aquaculture, 7 cattle and others, 7 So how does this company look on our world-class benchmarking score? First, let's look at the president commissioner, the what we would consider a chairman, is often called president commissioner there in Indonesia, and uh, Siam Sir, Sir Rigar has been there since 2010 to the present. Now, if we look at the president director, Hendojo Santosa, has been there since 1997, so from the beginning. And what we can see is that the company in 2012 was world class at a number two, then they suffered at six and eight and seven rankings, and then came back to profitable growth, number one ranking in the prior 12 months. So now that has improved. This means that it ranks among the best 59 of 590 large consumer staple companies. So where did this improvement come from? Well, both profitability and growth. We can see profitability has improved to number two from seven and growth is ranked number one, the best. Where did this improvement come from? Well, we can see on the asset utilization and profit margin side, it has been about average or slightly above in the case of profit margin. And we can see on the other side that profit margin has driven the profitability improvement we can see also that sales growth has gone up to a rank of a 4 out of 10, meaning they're growing reasonably fast relative to their peers. And that's 590 large consumer staples companies worldwide. So a very good turnaround story at this point. Let's hope that they can maintain that. Now, if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter and become a founding member at becomeabetterinvestor.net, then just do it at becomeabetterinvestor.net slash join. Did I say become a better investor.net slash join? Yes. A founding member subscription opportunity will close on the 31st of December 2016. See you there.